when you look at the uh, Shenandoah River and the tributaries, they look just uh, fine. I mean, we see babbling brooks and we see a nice river. You can take scenic photographs of that. But, um, you know, excessive nutrient pollution is, is not plainly visible, except when, it, when you get algae blooms, when the weather's really hot, and uh, when you start seeing uh, fish dying and that type of thing. And also, the river will start uh, smelling. Nutrients uh, are, of course, in, in the right amount, they're good, but too much of the nutrients is really not a good thing. Now, the other big problem, the biggest problem perhaps, I think, is uh, turbidity. Imagine that you're a, a, a bottom dweller or a fish, and the water is turbid, and there's a thin layer of mud on the bottom. Well, uh, this kills uh, fish eggs. Uh, it also suffocates uh, the animals, the benthic organisms that, or the microbenthic organisms that live on the bottom. And it's an especially bad problem in the Chesapeake Bay now, where it's, uh, which used to be a very rich fishing ground. Um, you know, the Shenandoah Basin contributes about 10% of the sedimentation that the Chesapeake Bay has now. And the sedimentation there is so bad in the spring that there are large dead zones, zones where nothing lives. The crabs cannot survive, and uh, the fish, they go off to some other place. They can fortunately swim away. Only about 30% of the waters right now in the Shenandoah Basin, or you could call clean, the rest are very polluted. You know, we've been uh, monitoring the, uh, the Shenandoah Basin since 1997, and we've done it on a regular basis. The Friends of the Shenandoah River and, and their partners, they really, we really consider ourselves you know, a scientific organization. We just want to uh, measure the facts and inform the public of, of what's happening. Uh, we pretty well uh, canvassed the whole Shenandoah uh, Basin to find out uh, which streams were big enough you know, to be important. The, the streams that are running uh, every, uh, every day, we, uh, we, we pick those and we sample. We have at least one site on each stream or tributary. Spout run is a real problem, both uh, right now, um, the nutrients and uh, the sedimentation are uh, impaired and they're way above what they should be. And uh, the trends are up fairly steeply. I know Spout Run fairly well. As a matter of fact, uh, the waterfall is right across from me here. And um, when, you, when you look at the, uh, the drainage area of Spout Run, it's, it's quite large. And it contains many, many uh, you know, farms and a lot of agriculture. There's not much heavy industry here. Uh, of course, population centers are growing. I think uh, we could add that there's been a lot of development in the Spout Run drainage areas. We have uh, housing developments, uh, some new roads being constructed. So the, the biggest problem with Spout Run right now is uh, probably the nutrients uh, that are being excessively applied or that find too easy a way to go into the water. Uh, another big problem are the cattle that uh, we see in the water. Now, while they're in the water, they contribute, of course, uh, they eliminate, and uh, that contains a lot of uh, nutrients. And they trample the water and they break the river bank, causes increased uh, uh, runoff. So if you want to solve a problem, you basically have to find out now what is affecting you know, this problem. And this is why we uh, sample. For Spout Run, I think the sampling site that we uh, now have uh, indicates uh, very well what the condition is. But once you start, um, uh, as, as a result of maybe this TMDL plan, once you start um, initiating uh, best management practices like uh, these are, for example, fencing uh, of the river, uh, putting in riverine uh, buffers, uh, cleaning up the, uh, 
broken down uh, banks of the river, uh, educational efforts, uh, etc. Uh, you want to measure the impact and uh, when when these BMPs, these best management practices are installed, we're going to increase the number of sampling sites just to measure that impact. Typically, uh, we would have a sampling site above where the uh, remedial action is initiated and one below to see whether there is a big difference in uh, concentration of these parameters.